The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are wrapping up our look at the Guardian cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for the benefit of new players. This is part four of a four-part series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Vicious Blow Level 2, Stand Together Level 3, I've Had Worse Level 4, and Monster Slayer Level 5. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on The Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get an Auto Fail, and the cards in between get a plus one, zero, or Elder Thing respectively. Cards that you build around or are good in one particular deck get a Blessed Token, while cards we believe are destined for the list of taboos or are simply bad for the game get a Curse Token. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your reward. That would be awesome. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Treaty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the new Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. We are back with our look at the final batch of Guardian cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for the benefit of new players. We're going to start off with a skill, Vicious Blow Level 2. Two combat skill icons, practiced and expert trait. If this skill test is successful during an attack, that attack deals plus one damage, plus two damage instead, if, if it succeeds by two or more. Thoughts on Vicious Blow Level 2? I never really feel like I need to upgrade into this card, personally. I've, I've always felt the level 0 version does what I want it to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, if it had maybe one more icon, if it was three fight icons instead of two, that way you could more reliably trigger that extra plus one damage that you're paying for in experience, then sure, but I often find that this just ends up being vicious blow level zero most of the time it's just like within the context of dunwich specifically like so many of the enemies have two health or four health that getting plus one damage is usually reserved for i'm gonna punch something and vicious blow it to kill it or it's going to be there's a five health enemy so i hit it once and then i hit it a second time with vicious blow or it's like i don't find often enough in the situations within the core at Dunwich that one, I want to spend two experience upgrading my Vicious Blow, and two, that I need that additional damage from it. Yeah, I see where you're coming from, Nate. I look at it from like a different angle. Um, I think Vicious Blow level two increases like the top end of what a Guardian can do in one action. It also comes in the same set as Brother Xavier and Zoe's Cross. So that means like if Zoe has Vicious Blow level two, there's a lot of she can dial the damage in like a lot of different ways. I think it also combos very, very well with Lightning Gun because, you know, when you're attacking at a nine, 11 with Vicious Blow, you know, level two, you're probably going to get a five damage shot, which is, uh, that's enough to wipe out like even the big, bo you know, big enemies. I mean, I that kills the Ghoul Priest in one shot. Exactly. In yeah, in solo. That's right. Kills the Ghoul Priest. But like just in general, if you need five damage, and that's I think what it really does is like in the end, it's a it's a way to get an an extra free action damage, you know, in a single in a single action. I think that alone makes it like actually really good. Another thought I had here actually was I think it's actually pretty decent in skids as well because he's got derringers, and derringers you want to be succeeding by two anyway. So then if he mm. succeeds by two on a derringer shot with this, you're looking at four damage. You know, and he wants to boost up, you know, he wants to get there. So I think like the people who can take it between core and Dunwich, like it's all pretty good with. Yeah, um that's a good point. Yeah. I, I like the idea of using it with lightning gun because you know, like we were saying, lightning gun is a very expensive weapon. Yeah. And just having a having a way to deal extra damage essentially for free is is pretty nice. I will give you that. But Yeah, because it'll save you lightning gun ammo, which is uh yeah. very expensive. <laughs> Compare this to, like, Taunt level 2. Like, I would probably upgrade Vicious Blow, like, nine, 95 times out of 100 over Taunt, over upgrading Taunt. You know, because Vicious Blow is going to, like, 
increase my ability to defeat to one shot bad guys. Yeah, and it, at the very least, like even if you don't get that additional damage, you're getting that additional icon. Yes, which is which is nice. You know, having yes. overpowers three and four is good. Yes, that's true. I don't think I will... I've ever bought this card. But yeah. It can be hard to afford when you've got higher priority upgrades like Lightning Gun. I think within the context of Dunwich, where you're going to be finding the XP for Lightning Gun and extra ammo, you're at 12 probably at that point. And while I like the, the extra damage, of course, because extra damage is very, very difficult to get your hands on. There just aren't a lot of sources of extra damage in this game, so... Getting a plus one is nice. Yeah, I've just never been in a position, I think, to to really upgrade to this outside of maybe building a like a standalone deck or something like that, where it's just like, well, I'm putting 29 XP in my deck anyway, so I might as well, if I've got the space for it, I'll I'll do this. But generally, the the plus one damage is enough. I think this one might actually get stronger as the as the card pool grows, where you know in dunwich if you're shooting a lot of two health enemies like you said once you start to get up to three and four and five where two isn't sort of the yeah. norm then having a little bit extra is uh is valuable i also think that thanks to vicious bull level two and zoe's cross and brother xavier and also beat cop level two i think there's also a route you can take especially with Zoe, where you just forego the lightning gun and you rely on machetes and maybe even fire axe. You rely on low-level weapons, but with different boosts, you know, as you need extra damage. Yeah, I think there's a way you can go about it. Like you have Keen Eye and you have Vicious Blow Level 2 and Her Cross and Brother Xavier and Beat Cop. I think there might be a way to... It opens up an alternate way of building a guardian that can kill enemies besides just lightning gun all the way. I, I find that that's kind of the way you end up having to build a solo guardian. Oh just... yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, because you because you can't. Yeah, you thing. can't really yeah. afford to bank five experience a lot of the time from scenario to scenario. True. Well, yeah. until you get better at the game, and then you can beat all of Dunwich with a level zero deck. But that's beside the point. Just like another thing with the. Ex experience of the game too right like you want to upgrade your cards between scenarios because that's part of the enjoyment of the game yeah i think and... you make a good point there nate that especially in solo spending all of your x putting all of your xp into the lightning gun basket doesn't improve your deck as much as you need it to like sure you've got one massive weapon but you need sort of to be spending your experience on a lot of different things to sort of improve the overall deck rather than just one card that if you don't draw it, well, then you're playing a zero XP deck essentially yeah. for that scenario. Whereas if you've got like a lot of things like Brother Xavier, one XP, Vicious Blow, two XP, stuff like that, you can sort of, you're seeing those cards a lot more often and you're, that experience that you've spent is affecting how the game is played rather than just picking up one lightning gun and being like, well, if I draw it, sure, I'm going to kill stuff, but I'm not going to be improving my game in, in other areas. Like, again, like say with Keen Eye, right? It's like it may just sit on the table, but hey, if you need to pass that one test or those three tests in one turn, you're going to notice that a lot more than, than say, one lightning gun. Mm -hmm. How would we rate this one? I'm going to give Vicious Blow level 2 a 0. I think it's a fine upgrade, and I certainly could see a multiplayer lightning gun deck really wanting and enjoying this card, whereas you just kill Seth Bishop in two giant lightning gun shots, which is pretty cool. In solo, it's a little more difficult to justify because, again, like... The enemies in Dunwich don't have odd health totals most of the time. And when they do, you usually have two actions to kill them. So I find that the level 2 version's a bit of a luxury upgrade in solo, but in multiplayer, it's pretty critical, I think. I'm going to give it a plus one, given that I think we were rating Vicious Blow level 0 and Elder Sign back in our core reviews, if I remember correctly. I'd give this one a plus one. It's not as essential as Vicious Blow level 0. Because Vicious Blow of Zero is like easy peasy guardian t card. You take it, you're a guardian, you use it. This one, like it actually takes a little bit more working and it's not going to just wreck things 
as reliably as vicious blow level zero because you may you, you're spending xp to you're spending xp and you may or may not get any benefit out of it because you might overshoot the baddie or you might not succeed by two but if you're playing a dedicated guardian like it kind of makes you better at what you want to do and that's deal a lot of damage in one action so i'm gonna give this a plus one i'm gonna land on zero with this one largely because i agree that i think this is a luxury upgrade we haven't looked at some of the other upgrades that are available and something like i've had worse is very very appealing of over this one so I certainly wouldn't like if I showed up at a table and somebody had vicious like decide to pick up vicious blow too. I would never, you know, it's a fine choice. But uh, yeah, with the the XP being a little tighter in Dunwich, and most of the time, vicious blow level zero is going to be okay. Then I think that uh, I think this one lands at. Uh, at zero it's it's something worth definitely upgrading if you've got the experience for it but i don't think it's the first thing i'm upgrading you know depending on on the type of build that uh, i'm going for that brings us to stand together it is a free event that costs three experience points two willpower skill icons spirit trait choose another investigator at your location both you and that investigator draw two cards and gain two resources what do you guys think about Stand Together? This card is so good. Oh my goodness. In two player, this card is amazing. It's oh, drawing this on turn one. Like drawing this in your opening hand is so good. It's because, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It's it sets you up for the rest of the game. Like honestly, almost no other card does. And not only that, but it sets up the other player too, which is yes. so good. Oh, you know, man. if yeah. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> like, if you're playing Emergency Cash in your Guardian deck, you can easily just swap out Emergency Cash for this card, and you're going to feel so good about it because it solves both problems that Guardians have. Resource mm -hmm. generation and card draw. Yeah, and it has and it has good icons on top of it. You know, So if, if it's later in the game and you don't need resources, you don't need cards, you've got two willpower icons to survive rotting remains. So it's like it's like extra good in that mm -hmm. regard. Plus, you get to look at that cool artifact. You're like, is that like a guy? Is she a ghost? She like, is a ghost. Kinda, she's a ghost. So he's standing with is is she like his wife or something? Yeah. Like, is that is that my, what's going on? My head canon for the art is that like the guy has gone insane. So he sees his dead wife everywhere, and he's like, Aww. "You and me together, we're gonna fight the mythos together." Well, so they're on the card. They won't take us down that easily. Yeah. The ghost wife. No, the ghost wife. She's not holding like a sword or anything. You know, is she doesn't she, need uh... to. She's oh, yeah. she's cast ethereal form, so she's oh, evading okay. all the enemies until the end of the turn. So basically, she's gonna, she's gonna leave him. Is what you're saying? She's gonna be like, "Oh, see ya." You know, they won't take me down that easily. <laughs> you, on the other hand. <laughs> oh, you're screwed. Yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, you're screwed, buddy. <laughs> no, this card's great. Just like by the numbers, it is eight actions worth of effort. Eight actions worth of effort in uh in one card in fact i think i actually i remember we were discussing this in edge of the earth comparing it to like other very high um action equivalent cards um like sweeping kick and um dang it i know there's another one that we were comparing this to in uh edge of the earth but basically stand together like the amount of actions of effort you get for one action is like a lot and I and not only that, but it's got it's got some icons, and you get to be a hero by helping out your friend. It's it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. And and Arkham is a game where your opening hand is so critical to your success that being able to pad out your opening hand and additional resources so that yeah. your you know maybe your skids player can now play the Leo and play something exactly. else. Exactly. Like that's huge. Yeah. Because that's the key. Like resources are most are like most valuable in the early turns of the game. So if you are able to help out your friend with stand together, like they're gonna be like, "I love you so much. I love you like I was your ghost wife." You know, that's that's what's gonna happen. I don't uh, play multiplayer all that often, but I know enough about it <laughs> that uh, when I do, this is pretty much an auto include. And oh, if yeah. I'm playing Guardian. 
it is very 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 good free the icons on this one are are fantastic we've seen a lot of cards in the dunwich legacy that have very kind of wonky icon spreads and getting a card with two of the same icon on it seems to be a rarity so the fact that this has two is is just better and and the sheer number of the goodies that you get for playing this card especially if you can get it down early is uh, is fantastic there is a level zero version available uh, in the nathaniel cho starter deck so you don't necessarily need to spend three xp to uh, to get this sort of effect you can uh, pick up the level zero version can't recall offhand what it actually does but uh, that'll appear it's just in resources the, uh, two resources for you and your friend still pretty good Still and I think it only has one willpower icon, if I remember correctly. You might, you might be right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, one of the probably one of the best multiplayer cards for for Guardian yeah. that uh, they receive. How do we rate this one? Oh, this is a slam dunk elder sign. You know, I think unlike teamwork, this requires no effort to coordinate. Yeah. It's just, hey, do you need cards and resources? Uh, well, I'm playing Arkham Horror the card game, so yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> The only downside is when you play this and your your friend draws paranoia and has to immediately lose all their resources. <laughs> that is the only downside. Or amnesia and they have to discard their whole hand. Yeah, and then they're going to feel terrible. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, which, you know, that's the risk you take when you play Arkham Horror the card game is you might draw some weaknesses. But other than that happening, this is like, this is so good. It's another So point. So if that happens in, in that case, are you the ghost wife? It's just like, yeah. Hey, yeah. buddy, here's some cards and well, resources. That's actually, oh, you drew Paranoia or Amnesia. Sorry about I that. I mean, that's part of why I gave it another sign. is because you get to discuss the super cool artwork about who's the ghost wife in this situation. What, what if the uh, the other investigator draws Haunted? Is that, like, the biggest flavor win, if that's yes, the case? Yes, that is the biggest flavor win. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> who's that talking to me? Oh, no. Or they draw the thing that follows. <laughs> Get that on the board early. The, the ghost wife just follows them around the board the entire game. That's <laughs> that's amusing. Yeah. Although I mean, if they draw the haunt, if they draw their weakness like haunted, right? Okay, so it costs two actions to remove, but they've already received four actions worth of benefit out of stand together, so they're still ahead. You know, mm -hmm. if they draw a weakness. Yeah. So good, elder sign. Yeah, this card gets an elder sign. I have played it to very good effect. It's great not much more to say about it it's just solid to yeah. solid all around the next card is i've had worse level four free event two willpower and an agility skill icon spirit trait again fast play when you are dealt damage and or horror cancel up to five damage and or horror just dealt to you then gain that many resources so this card is amazing it's very, very good. And it was reprinted in the revised core set. So chances are you already have two copies of this card, which begs the question why the designers reprinted this version and not the level two version that uh, appears in Before the Black Throne. But uh, yes, we rated this one very, very highly in the revised core set. It is amazing for Roland, yeah. who is always sort of on the brink of going insane and the ability to just say, nope, I'm not going to take any of that horror and I'm going to gain a bunch of resources to boot is, yeah. I mean, what can you, what more can you ask for? The ability to just laugh off a, uh, a rotting remains and gain three resources instead is like, you're going to feel like a million bucks when you do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I will say one little nitpick I have with this card is that I kind of wish the icon spread was different. Because it's a zero cost event that you're gonna cancel damage or horror with, right? And where do you most likely take damage and horror from treachery cards, right? Right. So it's like, oh, I see. Yeah. You, like you're never gonna commit this card to a skill test, in or at least you're never gonna commit it to a willpower skill test. You're just gonna play it, right? Mm -hmm. So I I think it would have been slightly better designed if maybe they'd given it agility skill icons. Or if maybe they'd given it combat skill icons, you know, to say you're rugged, you can withstand the pain, 
I don't know. Oh. Just a minor nitpick uh, to an otherwise fantastic card. Well, it works on Frozen in Fear. True. Yeah, that is true. Go. Frozen Fear is pretty crippling to someone like Roland if he can't deal with it. Yeah. I'd, I'd say my only nitpick with this card is, is again, that it's not the level 2 version, which is not really a, a terrible thing. I mean, like we've been saying, experience is tight in Dunwich, and 4 XP is is going to be tough to justify. So if you happen to get your hands on the level 2 version in Before the Black Throne, the level 4, it basically does everything you would want that that this one does. This one is sort of a, a souped up version of the level two yeah. version. And so if you do have access to level two, that you'll, I think you'll be perfectly happy uh, with that. The, uh, the spirit trait does come in handy down the road. Although again, this is the level four version. So Calvin can't take it. He can take the level two version though. I have to say that, uh, this is one of the few cards I think in the Dunwich legacy that can actually help you survive beyond the veil if you get tagged by that. Oh, that's right. This is one of the few, I think, very few ways that you might actually yeah. stand a chance. So I'm going to reveal a spoiler here. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, just close your ears for a second. But beyond the veil deals 10 damage. And barring you are a full health guardian, there aren't any investigators who can survive that this actually gives you a chance i don't think i've ever played it to survive beyond the veil but if you've got one of these and you're gonna you know beyond the veil is gonna pop you might actually survive which is in this campaign that's worth mm -hmm. something so yeah between this and if you have um brother xavier out or b cop level two you're you're sitting pretty at that point you're gonna survive it so how would we rate this one? What do we give it in the revised core? I think we sign? give it an elder sign. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give this one a plus one. Four experience is a lot, and the level two version really does just, like you said, man from Lang, it does everything you want it to do. You know, mm. barring the situation of I need to survive beyond the veil. I've had worse level four. Eh, it's tough to justify, especially when one more experience gets you a lightning gun. Yeah, also um, with Brother Xavier in, the, in this set, the usefulness of I've Had Worse is like the pinnacle of damage prevention kind of drops a little bit because you've got Brother Xavier at one XP that can um, soak up a whole lot of damage and horror for you. That being said, like this is still very good because it's fast and it gives you resources. Um, and you know, what, you know what I would do? Since now that you've, you know, congratulations, you have purchased the, uh, you know, the, the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion. I'd suggest, and you now have four copies of I've Had Worse Level 4, why not uh, pretend that two of them are the Level 2 version? And then you're going to be really happy. Just just pretend. Just use your imagination. Or a Sharpie. Yeah, or a printer. And then just, printer. Sleeve, just sleeve over the Level 4 version with the Level 2 version. There you go. Yeah, or, like, or, or even like a little sticky note. You can just put a little sticky note on the text box. You know, and then just use the level two version and you're good. But yeah, I'm, I'm still going to give this one a plus one anyway. Like I said, its stock goes down a little bit because Guardians have more ways to soak damage and horror as time goes on. But this is still very good. Roland's options in the revised core are pretty limited. So it's much easier to justify it here. I'd almost give this one a like a uh, an elder thing just for reprinting it in the revised core and and leaving it here just as a but uh, yeah i think plus one is a is is good for it here it's there's a lot more competition now that your card pool is expanded so cards that might have got an elder sign in the revised core don't necessarily warrant that here and and i think this is one of those cases where there's a lot of competition now for, for all that uh, XP, and uh, as good as this effect is, I think, you know, at least trying to pick up one copy in Roland is is a pretty good ask, but again, you know, you can look at the uh, level 2 version or borrow one from a friend or just print one off and and sleeve it in the, the card that you were going to use this for. And, and like sticky I said, note, I'm telling you, sticky note. You'll be happy. 
That brings us to the final Guardian card in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion, and it is Monster Slayer. One cost event that costs 5 XP. Has a combat and wild skill icon spirit trait. Fight if this attack succeeds against a non-elite enemy. Defeat that enemy. I think this is one of the most overpriced cards in terms of XP. There is a level 0 version available in the Nathaniel Cho starter deck that is actually way better than this one. <laughs> Just hands down better. But yeah, this this one is, I think, horrendously overpriced at, at 5 XP. And, and I'm not entirely sure why they decided to tag 5 XP. Like, sure, defeating an enemy with a non-elite enemy, so it is limited. You just can't kill anything with this. So take the Conglomeration of Spheres, for example. Fairly beefy. I think it has 6 health. Making one attack... To defeat it sure if there were if the campaign was overflowing with enemies like that sure i could see justifying monster hunter but the campaign is not overflowing with enemies like that and generally if you've say got a lightning gun or even any other weapon taking down enemies in this game isn't that hard so this one seems just kind of outclassed to be honest yeah there's i i think when they were designing the core and this because this was being designed at the same time as the core i think we've seen this quite quite often with cards like um lure and bait and switch barricade there's this series of arkham horror cards that seem like they were designed for a different game than arkham horror turned out to be and I think in that alternate universe version of the game, you had more enemies, significantly more enemies like Conglomeration of Spheres, which were very difficult to deal with. And being able to just one-shot them um, with an event like, like Monster Slayer would be worth 5 XP. But in the game we have now, the ability to kill three enemies with a lightning gun is way stronger than being able to kill one enemy with this. Mm -hmm. yeah and it is cheap thankfully but you still have to make a skill test too and that's the other yes. big bummer about this card is that you could spend five xp play it and then draw the auto fail and oh how your stomach must sink after that pulled from the bag <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness and you also don't get your boosts from uh from your weapon when you uh play this you get your boost from your um you know, from like your beat cop, but you don't get your boost from your weapon. And then you're going to feel real terrible if you want to boost it with your, uh, with your vicious blow. Cause it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? You're going to, you're going to feel really bad when that happens. So it's just, it's just incongruent with the game that Arkham turned out to be. Of all the cards in Dunwich, this is the one that kind of surprises me that hasn't received a taboo change much like oh, the spring gotcha. shield just to lower the XP cost slightly i don't know what i would be willing to pay for this type of effect because like you said it's not the type of effect that we need all that often so but five is too much that's i'm pretty certain of that how would we uh, rate this one? Oh, this is a tentacle this is yeah unplayably bad yeah in fact it's one of those cards where like I don't want to quite say that it makes your deck worse because at least it has two, you know, combat icons on it. But it going doesn't make down your this deck road, better. Yeah, it doesn't make it better. Going down this road is going to be like a net negative for you, I would think. You know, like take that five XP and just buy something, get get some stand togethers. You know, and then you're going to be like, you're going to feel much better about it. Yeah, this is yeah tentacle. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and the other thing holding this card back too is that guardians don't have the card draw, so like you may never even see it. Yeah, that's true. Or at least with um, at least with the lightning gun, you have prepared for the worst in the same set. So exactly. You can go look for it. Yep. Yeah. I was talking earlier of of spending XP and and not improving your deck, and <laughs> this is one of those cards that 
yeah. should you have five XP and spend it on this card, I think you will, like you say, Matastrophic, you're actually doing your deck a disfavor at this yeah. point because you're not improving your deck in any meaningful way by spending this XP. Sure, the conglomeration is a bit of a pain, but it doesn't appear in that many scenarios either. And when it does appear, it tends to appear early. So mm -hmm. you don't have access to this card anyway. So by the time you can actually spend the XP on this, you'll have much better ways of dealing with the conglomeration anyway. So it basically solves a problem that doesn't really exist in the game. So yeah, this one gets a tentacle from me as well. Do yourself a favor, pick up the Nathaniel Cho starter deck and play the uh, the level zero version, especially in Nathaniel. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's just like night and day. It's unbelievable how good the level zero version is compared to to uh, to this version. And it's funny that this version doesn't even really work all that well in Nathaniel, to be honest, because he would get the bonus damage, which you don't need. So... There's no damage. There's no damage. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Tentacle. Unfortunately, we're going to end this one off on a bit of a bummer with a uh, a tentacle for the big 5 XP card. But uh, fortunately, if you want to spend 5 XP, there is, uh, there's always Lightning Gun out there. So that's going to do it for our look at the Guardian cards in the uh, Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion. I hope you have enjoyed... Uh, this look at the uh, the Guardian cards in the first uh, cycle for the uh, Arkham Horror LCG. If you're playing the cycles in uh, the way they were released, you're probably picking this one up first. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Any final thoughts on uh, the Guardian cards that uh, we've taken a look at? I think there's a great mix of support cards and good weapons and just general good upgrades for the guardians in this card pool you know we've got some really great level zero cards with prepare for the worst and um bandolier and a couple others but then you've also got um you know you've got stand together and i've had worse these like really nice support cards and even teamwork to an extent too if you really want to build around it but then you've got the lightning gun the big bad shoot 'em up kill everything weapon which is great I think the um, I I do think Guardian like in this box receives a, like one or two too many like absolute stinkers like Blackjack, Springfield, and Monster Slayer, all of which fight things by the way. So it it kind of means that at this stage in the game, Guardians are like kind of a little behind when it comes to having like really good cards to build decks with. I I I do have to admit because three is a lot when you only have like ten or twelve you know, coming to you. Um, that being said, they also have some like amazing ones with Stand Together and Lightning Gun. And um, in my opinion, Vicious Blow of Two is very good. Prepared for the Worst, very, very good. And uh, I like Brother Xavier because it it's, it's, it's an alternative to B-Cop. And that's what expansion should be giving you is like alternatives to what you've been playing all along. I think this uh, this expansion is pretty good for Guardian. If you've already got the revised core, I would add I've had worse four onto that list of, you know, you're not playing Blackjack or the Springfield or Monster Slayer. You're not going to be getting anything mm -hmm. out of I've had worse four either. So you're Let's break the two on it. They Just are the you are losing some cards there. Yeah. I think this expansion fleshes out a couple of, of key themes for Guardians where they get prepared for the worst, which is huge. The ability to search up your weapon when if you don't happen to get it in your opening hand is is very big it also fleshes out that the guardian as protector of the group we really start to see that come to the fore in this expansion you've got brother xavier stand together um, leadership cards like that as the card as your card pool grows and you gain more expansions that is something that the guardians really lean into heavily they receive a lot of cards that are very good in multiplayer at, at helping the group survive and and we start to see the beginnings of that uh, in this expansion 
That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.